Hey, what's up stream keepers and welcome back to my channel. And in today's topic, I want to talk to you guys about plants and stream tanks, right? Uh, there have been a lot of questions regarding um, what I use uh, in terms of the plants that I use and of course uh, how I actually grow them. Is there any uh, you know, disadvantage or any pitfalls in terms of uh, growing plants in the, uh, in the stream tank? And if, if, if you have been following my channel, you know, uh, in terms of my stream breeding methodology, it's always about, you know, streamlining the process and actually adding plants, actually, you know, uh, in terms of from a reset uh, perspective, in terms of uh, if I'm going to reset my tank, then the plants would generally uh, be part of the uh, you know, reset process. So for example, I'd have to bring the plant out uh, before I start to to vacuum out all the soil and, and so on and so forth. So it actually adds to that uh, process. Uh, it's actually an additional step to, to do that. However, uh, I think the, the benefits of having plants in the in the in the tank uh, outweighs the outweighs the uh, effort that is required, you know, just to bring it out before I reset the tank. And the first thing that uh, plants actually bring to the entire ecosystem is especially for streams is the uh, the coverage. So plants actually provide a, a natural maze uh, for, for, the, for the streams to actually uh, hide uh, when they start to go into the molting uh, process. <clears throat> you know, although we do have mosses in the tank, however, you know, moss, uh, if it's just moss by itself, it is sufficient. Uh, however, you know, I just wanted to add the additional coverage for them, uh, for, the, for the streams to actually mold in peace. And of course, you know, try to stay away from those uh, those male that may attack them, uh, do af just right after they mold, um, even if let's say they are not settled, you know, so so that additional coverage actually helps uh, the stream in terms of the uh, um, survival survivability, right? So the second part of uh, having plants in the in the tank is actually you can actually see the the growth of the plants, and it's actually a very good indicator of uh, your water parameters. If for example, if the plants are starting to uh, deteriorate in their health, uh, they are you know, not doing well or they are not growing, uh, then of course you will, it, it is a telltale sign that there is actually something wrong with the water parameters. So plants do give a lot of uh, benefits in terms of that. You, know, you can actually observe what is happening in the tank without actually even having to measure them. So the third thing about uh, the way I, I, I grow my the plants in, in my aquarium, uh, in my stream tank is actually I use uh, ceramic pots, <coughs> ceramic pots like this. <coughs> so it depends on your size uh, of your tank. Uh, you have a smaller tank, then you can use a smaller pot and a bigger tank, you can use a bigger pot or even you can put more than one pot uh, in the tank. And the reason why I use you know ceramic pot is that if you have been in the you know uh, aquarium industry long enough, uh, ceramic pots or terracotta pots, uh, they are actually widely used in uh, fish breeding. Especially uh, in the past when I was uh, breeding up with stoves, uh, they we usually just use the flower pot as a media for them to lay their eggs. So uh, terracotta has, has been a very well accepted um, uh, material. Uh, they do not actually alter the, the water parameters and they also you know, uh, provide additional, uh, because they are porous and they also provide additional uh, porosity you know, in terms of the uh, surface area for the biofilm to actually grow and of course maybe some beneficial bacteria as well. So what I do normally for a big pot like this uh, which is about you know, 12 to 15 cm long or wide, um, what I do is that I actually lay them with uh, you know, ceramic you know, it helps to elevate a little bit of the uh, pot <coughs> uh, in terms of, of that and then I will then put soil in there, uh, ADA soil and then after I put the ADA soil in there then I will start to you know, grow plants like, like this uh, they, are, they are treated, they are clean already so they have no pests in there um, so what I do is, is that you know, uh, usually I buy either tissue cultured uh, uh, plants or I get from uh, <coughs> uh, you know, hobbies that that grow from uh, tissue culture or these are from immersed immerse, uh, settings as well. So when I plant them in, 
and you know over so this this little plant right here is actually the Ichinodorus uh, ozilot reed so I think it's the same one over here you can actually grow uh, into quite a big big size depending on your tank tank uh, size as well so the reason why I use uh, Ichinodorus is is because Ichinodorus is a, a rosette or they call it uh, Amazon swords uh, they are rosette so you can see that you know the the, the rosette of the plants they, <clears throat> the way they propagate is not through runners or anything so they usually send out a, a flower stalk and then sometimes there will be like a small little plantlets on, on those flower stalk as well so in terms of propagation there are many ways if let's say you want to do immersed propagation you can actually slice off the rhizome and then new plants will, will start to come out so these are some ways of actually propagating the plant however you know we are not going to uh, dive into that that de level of details in terms of uh, plant propagation uh, the reason why i use them uh, like i said uh, they are fairly inexpensive um, and also they are very hardy uh, they, they do not grow very uh, quickly in terms of uh, propagation so one plant can actually you know uh, be in a pot and then grow for three to four years and once the soil you know breaks down into mud i actually change the soil out and uh, trim the root ball every three to four years so so it's actually quite maintenance free in that sense uh, i actually enjoy them a lot because firstly they provide a lot of cover uh, for the streams uh, during molting and and of course, you know, it, it shows a lot of good uh, indication of whether the water parameters are, are in the ideal ideal range. <clears throat> so, so the reason why I use, you know, pots like this, uh, some, you know, some of the pots that I have uh, do not have holes. And actually, I, I didn't want to have holes in them. Uh, and one of the reasons is, is because I do not want the roots to actually come out and disturb the, disturb the, uh, the soil uh, in, in, in the main tank. So that's the reason why I actually use a, a pot uh, so that I can actually contain them. Uh, even if they are in a pot, these plants actually still grow quite, quite large. As you can see behind, you know, they actually still grow quite large. And, uh, and, and it's, a, it's a good sign that the plant is doing well. And usually there's a correlation when the plants start to do well, you know, your streams will start to breed and, and so on and so forth. So plants are actually one of the reasons, uh, one of the additional uh, add-on uh, uh, other than mosses that I use. I use both moss and plants in, in that sense. So there's also a lot of benefits in terms of using, you know, uh, terracotta pots. It is very inexpensive, you know, just a dollar, two dollars. You can actually get one pot like this and they can last for a long, long time. You know, they will not decompose, they will not disintegrate, they will not break down. So they can really, really last a long, long time. So uh, sometimes you will see, you know, uh, algae is growing on them and then of course streams will start to uh, forage and on them as well. So in terms of uh, pots like this, um, there's another another good good benefit of it is because when you start to put soil in there, right? So you have additional soil buffering uh, buffering capacity in terms of the entire uh, tank tank area because the the method that we use right here is thin soil thin soil layer uh, and then we added more soil in here so that actually you know there's actually a lot more soil in that sense. So this this method. Uh, it, it, it resembles those you know uh, box filter uh, where where you put a put a you know a tube in there and and it helps to to filtrate the the water however this is not a box filter but it acts like one uh, it helps to also you know the the roots help to make sure that uh, the the water is uh, i mean the soil is aerated as well uh, so it doesn't get stagnant uh, in terms of the uh, the bacteria in in there so there's a, a ton of you know a ton of uh, benefits in, in in that sense um i have tried with uh one of my tanks i actually tried with um stem plants but it's it's, it's really too much work because i have to uh, frequently trim them and that's not something that i i really like uh it doesn't fit into my schedule as well as uh, it grows too fast and uh, it's you know i i have to keep you know interfering with the tank and that's not something that i I, I enjoy as well because uh, it, it creates more instability in the tank if I keep uh, meddling with the tank and that's the reason why I choose a slow growing plants like uh, Ichinodorus. So there are other plants as well in the market like uh, you know cryptos, there are some Buseps. Uh, you can generally use, use them. 
so as long as you do not keep meddling, meddling or you keep uh, interfering with the tank e ecosystem by putting your hands into the, into the tank. So uh, there are many plants, as, uh, like I've mentioned, so you can use any type of plants you like. So as long as you think that uh, you know, uh, it is suitable for them. So for example, even ferns, perfectly fine. They grow very slowly and they grow very nicely as well. Um, you can, if you are very you know, hardworking, you really enjoy uh, trimming uh, stem plants, then you can go ahead uh, using stem plants. However, for me, I will use uh, Echinodorus. I, in the past, I used some uh, cryptos. Um, however, you know, every time when I do a reset of a thing, the, the plant actually melted. So, so that's something that uh, deterred me from, from using cryptos uh, again. Uh, and I stuck with uh, Echinodorus because they are really, really hardy. So even after they reset, you know, even I move them out uh, by day 20, 25, you know, I start to put the, the pots back into the tank and they just grow, you know. Uh, even when I change out the soil uh, from, from, the, from the pot and I put new soil in there, in one week, the growth just take off, you know. So there are a lot of benefits in terms of uh, why I use uh, Echinodorus instead of other plants. And in the Echinodorus family, there is a lot, a lot of plants uh, in there. There's a lot of variety in there. So you can actually choose and select, uh, you know, various types depending on your uh, on your budget as well. Uh, there are some that is as low, you know, in Singapore, we have it as low as $2 all the way up to very expensive few hundred dollars Echinodorus, like the Iguanzu, or opeka or something like that you know so those are the more expensive ones uh, however at the end of the day i think um you know having an additional green item in the in the in the ecosystem it actually helps and also you know it's, it's more pleasing to the eye as well uh, rather than just seeing just stream it's, itself of course you know uh if is, is there any you know uh, disadvantage of having a pots like this of course there are disadvantages and uh, usually I have placed them uh, in strategic position so that you know I do not actually uh, be I do not actually create an additional blind spot where I can cannot even uh, cannot even see what's happening behind the pot so I think that's that's a, a very critical thing um, like for example box filter I, I've seen many people you know trying to uh, put it close very close to the, the edge of the tank I think that's fine if there's a little gap I think that that will create some problem and that's that's the same thing with pots uh, however it is round so usually I'll place them slightly up uh, forward and so that I can actually see what's behind the pot as well so I, I don't want uh, streams to actually go there and then if they die then you know uh, nobody actually sees it and then there may be an ammonia spike in, in, in that sense so so you have to be careful on the placement as well and usually what I do is that I place them uh, close to the end of the tank but there's a little gap but of course I will still be able to see them through the sides of, of the glass. So, so that's the reason why I use uh, what I use and uh, there's certainly a lot of benefits in terms of uh, the plants uh, growth and you know having this natural maze in, in that sense. So. If you are you know interested in, in, in putting a plants in, in, in the tank uh, using a pot method, then definitely you can uh, you can give it a go and, and try. Uh, in addition to all this benefit, there is actually one more additional benefit is because it has soil in there, it has media in there, it actually cultivates uh, beneficial bacteria. So when you do a reset of the tank and you put the plants the plant pot back into the tank itself then it helps to also kickstart that, uh, that that cycle much faster uh, because there is already you know beneficial bacteria that is uh, uh, colonized in the tank and it actually helps to, to speed up the process as well so lots of benefits uh, having you know for the plants in the, in the tank uh, you know uh, so I think that's all that's all guys uh, for this uh, episode uh, so if you like my channel remember to give a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel please subscribe to, to my channel below and until next time peace out